Hi, everyone, and welcome to the sports industry panel for Google VetNet Career Week. I'm John Cruz from the YouTube Sports Content Partnership team here at Google, and I'll be the moderator for this for this discussion. For the next hour, I'm honored to spend time with five wonderful panelists from the sports space, and I will try to uh, be brief and insightful, but we'll have our panelists spend most of the time uh, discussing today's topics with you. And from a purpose standpoint, similar to the other industry panels that we've been hosting, we want you to hear from representatives from different companies within the sports space. We have a nice cross-section of folks and, and backgrounds here today. We want to help you understand both their roles and what roles are available in sports. And then also, uh, we've asked the team, we've asked the group to provide some recommendations for how you should think about getting your foot in the door. The hope is by listening to these stories, you'll have a better sense of what it means to work in the sports industry, and it'll help you uh, better sort through some of your career aspirations. So, Christina, Pete, Blake, Ryan, and Tyrone. Thanks so much for thanks so much for joining us today and for giving back to veteran and military spouse communities. Thanks so, for to get us going, to get us going and get the ball rolling, I'd love to go around the panel, have you introduce yourself, tell us who you work for, what role you currently sit in, what you love or like most about your current role, and then what you enjoy most about working in sports more broadly. So I feel like that'll give us, you know, give the give the group some grounding. So Christina, let's start with you. Sure, and and thanks, John, for having us here today. Um, I'm Christina Kasravi. I am the director of business analytics and strategy at the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, I just wrapped up my fourth season with the team, and in this role, focus mostly on supporting revenue generating teams with any sort of large data analysis, whether it's providing recommendations on ticket pricing, evaluating corporate partnership deals, providing insights on our fans, broadcast insights, any sort of um, help that can provide um, support, support to our bottom line, as well as any internal consulting needs um, that might support efficiency generation and business planning throughout um, the team and company. What I love most about working in sports um, is the, the nature of working under one company with a common goal um, and acknowledging that the product that we're supporting is not necessarily a physical, tangible item that we can change one ingredient in the recipe of to impact the outcome, but rather an experience. And so shaping and guiding that experience for our fans, for our you know, loyal customers, and also for you know, the families that are impacted by our events is really what you know, drives me and um, is why I enjoy working in sports. Awesome, seems like you have your hands full. Um, Ryan, we'll go to you next. Yeah, John, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Ryan Van Marth. I'm the Vice President of Stadium Operations and Strategic Planning for the uh, San Francisco 49ers at Levi's Stadium here in Santa Clara. Um, in my role, I, uh, I oversee uh, all the facility operations, engineering, maintenance, uh, project management, grounds crew, um, long-term capital planning, utilities, and, and your basic facility functions at the stadium. Uh, it's my second year with the team, um, eighth in professional sports, um, I'm a United States Air Force Academy graduate uh, and Air Force veteran, so we are, I appreciate this panel and what, what uh, Google is doing for, for our veterans. Um, the thing that I love most about uh, where I work and what we do is, is really the platform that it, we have in professional sports to affect change, um, influence people, uh, make a difference in our community. Um, those, those are all things that, uh, that go along with our business that a lot of times get overlooked. Uh, when you look at just just think about sports and what it does. So there's there's a big platform here. I really love it, um, and I love the projects we do here. So thank you for having us. Great, we're, we're happy to have you, Pete. Let's go to you next. Thanks, John. Uh, my name is Pete Britt. I head up the business strategy and analytics team at the New York Yankees. Um, been in this role for a little over three years now. Um, previously, was working on the finance team of the Yankees. Um, I started here in 2014, so about seven years in total. Um, 
similar to kind of what Christina said, you know, my role is uh, very similar in that, you know, we support all revenue generating departments um, with a primary focus on ticket sales, which is our, our largest revenue stream. Um, and anything from digital marketing strategy, sales operations and CRM, uh, product pricing, um, all the way to data warehousing and you know, building the foundation of our data across the business side of the organization. Um, as far as kind of what I like the most about my role in working in sports is being able to see on a daily basis, at least in season, you know, the tangible impact that some of my work has on the enjoyment of a game for fans. So, you know, someone who we can potentially serve up an ad to to come to a game and then seeing them throughout the process in the stadium, enjoying hopefully a Yankees win, but more than anything, just enjoying the, you know, the overall aspect of a game in Yankee stadium and making sure that that experience is enjoyable for fans across all different levels, all different ages. Um, you know, that to me is, is something that I get to see almost every day and what keeps me coming back every day. Awesome. Blake, let's go to you next. Thanks, John, and thanks uh, everybody who's attending. Thank you all for your service. Uh, it's really an honor to be here today. Uh, I'm Blake Stuchin, Vice President of Digital Media Business Development at the National Football League. Uh, my role and our team uh, encompasses two things. One is we look after the live game rights and the distribution strategy for all NFL games. The second part of what we do is when you think about live games being three hours a week for about 21 weeks a year, uh, we have a part of the business which we call 24-7, 365, which is how else do we engage our fans every other second of the day with all of the media content that we produce and distribute on platforms like YouTube, where we have the opportunity to work with John and his team, as well as a broad range of other endpoints that include NFL.com, NFL Network, NFL Red Zone, all of the broadcasters that we work with, and a whole range of digital and social platforms. Um, I've been at the NFL for nine years now. And uh, the thing that for me, uh, I most enjoy about my role is the fact that so much of what we do is consumer or in our parlance fan facing. We spend a lot of time thinking about what the right business opportunities would be to create commercial partnerships. But at the end of the day, it means we're making a show or a piece of content or something ultimately that usually there's a 12 year old kid out there who wouldn't otherwise have gotten to see something that instead we get to go make and find a way as business people to um, support that through advertising, through sponsorship, through subscription, some other way that makes it work. But um, the, the, the kid at heart that I hope I still am that grew up an avid sports fan um, and remains one to this day gets really excited about the different ways that we can package those things together um, to uh, to create a whole host of new things every day. Great, and let's uh, close out this section with Tyrone. Thanks, John. Good to be here. Uh, let me just first say, just a pleasure to be here with everybody, and and also just being here to help uh, provide support for for veterans that are looking to make the transition. Um, I oversee uh, the diversity pipeline program with Major League Baseball, where I'm a senior director within our diversity, equity, and inclusion team. Uh, a big part of what I'm, I'm doing on a daily basis is really helping to create opportunity, work closely with individuals to try to assist them to reach their goals of breaking into the industry than the baseball operations space. Uh, and with this, is a, the big focus is on underrepresented groups, uh, including you know, women, persons of color, and also if we can and help as, as many uh, veterans as well, they're looking to make the transition into, into baseball at this stage. Uh, a one one great thing also just in terms of uh, I was this is my sixth year with Major League Baseball in our office of the commissioner. Uh, but I also worked for 20 years at the club level, working for teams with the, the Braves, the Indians and the Pirates. Uh, so for me, a big part of my first 20 years was the idea of trying to compete and that element of being part of that with the club. But now a big part of my role that which I truly enjoy is helping to serve and with that making hopefully dreams come true for people to have the opportunity to do something they've loved to do since they were possibly a kid and being involved in baseball. And then now being able to have that opportunity as an adult and, and doing something they love to do and finding an area that they can be uh, excited about, but also understanding this game is truly about uh, a, a marathon. It's not a sprint and uh, just love the opportunity to help others and see them get into a great position to do something they love to do. Oh, uh, interesting. I'm sure you, you garnered a lot of, Great insights looking at personnel uh, from a number of different angles over the years. Um, 
And speaking of insights, obviously, this is a career focused panel. I know that outside of Tyrone, most of you actually did not start in sports. Uh, this is the place that uh, you are obviously sitting today, but it definitely wasn't the starting point. Blake, can you talk a little bit about how you broke into sports? Was there you know, a project, a break, a moment? Like, Can you tell us a little bit more about your path um, and how you landed in, in your current seat? Sure. Uh, I'm just your everyday former web developer turned marketer turned investment banker turned sports industry professional. You get a lot of those. Um, there you go. I, um, I think the one thing that's been a through line for me is I've always been fascinated by the media business. And I still to this day think of myself more as a media industry professional than I do a sports executive. Um, and the two are pretty intertwined, but that's been that's been core to my focus. Um, I generally have been um, as much of a sports fan as I've been. I've also been fascinated by how people interact with different forms of communication. Without dating myself, I remember a time of dial-up internet pretty well and remember just how transformative um, the web felt like it was going to be on my generation. And um, that is something that was a through line for everything I've done. Uh, I went to the University of Pennsylvania where I studied communication um, and did so not because I thought of it as a pre-professional degree. In fact, anybody who's studied that school can tell you it isn't. And I didn't learn any particularly practical skills, at least I thought at the time, um, to apply to things like production or journalism. What I did learn, however, was how to write um, and how to think critically, which I didn't realize how incredibly valuable that would be, uh, but it was really useful. And so uh, from there, um, I never thought I'd go back to school. I did wind up doing so, but I thought that there were three things that would really be important for me in my career, and those have actually proven to be true. One was to have some sense of marketing skills, to understand um, how to sell a product or a service of any kind. The second is to have some level of management skills because business is a team sport. Uh, and the third was to have financial skills because I needed to keep score. And so when I graduated college, having never done any on-campus recruiting with, did a senior thesis, had absolutely no sense of what I was gonna do when I graduated and truly had not thought about my career path until after I graduated, I went first to go look into having a career in marketing, spent several years doing that, left the industry entirely at a point at which I thought, okay, it's time for me to just do something else to learn finance and along the way to manage a team. And did that and was uh, working as an investment banker, doing mergers and acquisitions and capital raising for media companies. Um, when the first role I would have at the NFL popped up in the jobs you may be interested in box on LinkedIn, which I'd never clicked on before and haven't since, uh, but was fascinated by the sort of convergence of uh, the media business and my personal interest in sports. So um, I didn't know anybody in sports. I never sought to have a career in sports, but I am a good example of someone who can find a career in sports um, from an unexpected way. Very, very helpful and glad those LinkedIn algorithms are uh, were, were a big boost for you. Um, Pete, similar question. I know you obviously, uh, you know, you're uh, been in sports for some time now, but uh, didn't start that. Can you tell us a little bit more about your path and, and how you got into the industry? Uh, yeah, definitely. And not to steal uh, Christina's thunder, but we have very, very similar paths. So, um, you know, I, I was a, a collegiate athlete, certainly not nearly as decorated as Christina. So if you have some time, Google her, Christina Kosravi, Penn softball. Um, but out of college, you know, I want to stoke my competitive fire. I ended up uh, becoming a bond trader. Um, so I was on Wall Street for a few years. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It was very competitive, very intellectually stimulating just didn't see a, a long-term career path for me uh, in that field. Didn't feel like I was developing uh, enough skills that would take me into a potentially a different career. So did a lot of networking with people in all different industries. Everything kind of came back to my interest in the business of sports after that. Um, and in speaking with a lot of um, close friends, people who have been in the industry, um, you know, I was, on one hand, looking for entry level jobs in sports, on the other hand, um, looking at business schools that had somewhat of a focus on sports and entertainment as a way to, you know, using my, my bond trading, effectively hedge my bets a little bit and say, you know, if the sports thing doesn't work out, go back to school, further my career somehow and, and go into a different industry. Um, school ended up being the better option for me. And so I went out to UCLA Anderson, as did Christina. Um, and had a you know a large focus on uh, trying to break into 
uh, the team or league side of sports and specifically in the finance and analytics um, side of the business. Uh, and from there, you know, there's a lot of networking. We would visit a lot of companies, um, West Coast, East Coast, all over. I'm from the East Coast originally. So for me, it was pretty serendipitous that the Yankees happened to have a finance job that opened up that closely aligned with when I was graduating from UCLA. Um, you know, had made a few good connections there from, you know, some of the times we had visited. Applied online through Teamwork Online, which continues to be a good research for a good resource for um, roles and on the team side, and just got lucky. Um, my my resume stood out stood out from a couple of the other ones, and had a few interviews, and ends up in the finance team. So, um, you know, there was a bit of luck, a bit of good fortune, but um, knew kind of after a few years on the job um, as monitor that you know sports was where I wanted my career to go. Oh, it's great. It seems like with both you and Blake, there was a little bit of design uh, and a little bit of uh, opportunity kind of blending in there to, to make it happen. I know that many of us uh, face uncertainty in as we think about our careers, um, even, you know, some discomfort. Some have it all planned out. Um, and Ryan, I'm curious to hear from you, because I think you have a really uh, interesting background that differs a little bit from Blake and, and Pete. Would love to understand your path from uh, serving in the Air Force to where you are today and, you know, how much planning played a role in that and how much of it was uh, kind of reacting to the opportunities in front of you. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good question, John. <clears throat> yeah, my, my career path is a little untraditional. Um, like I mentioned before, I graduated from the Air Force Academy, served in the Air Force, fulfilled my commitment. And decided I wanted to separate and kind of go into, kind of go into a, my second career. So I initially um, uh, worked in construction. Uh, worked for a large uh, private general contractor doing design build projects. Um, did that for eight years in Seattle and in LA, um, and so uh, built some large projects. And while I was in that, I uh, I connected with several of my my veteran friends, uh, a few of who were working in the sports industry and. And started to set up informational, uh, informational interviews. Would would go and 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 meet with some of the people at the clubs and teams. Um, and they connected me, and I started doing some interviews. Um, I actually interviewed with a couple different uh, teams um, before I finally got an opportunity to go work for the Seattle Mariners in Seattle, um, and worked there for six years uh, as a director of engineering and maintenance, and later on construction and planning. Um, and, and so I would say that, um, you know, it was never my, I, I think when I went to school, it was never my intent to go and work for a professional sports team. I was a, I was a college athlete, played football at the Air Force Academy, but at the same time, I always saw myself in more of a traditional business role. Um, and as I got away from school, I, I really thought that that would be, it'd be fun and exciting to go back into that industry somehow. Um, but it, it was more about taking opportunities as they came, came up and, and, really net, using my network um, uh, of people and just asking questions and being inquisitive and, and putting myself out there and seeing if people would, you know, spend the day with me or spend, you know, go to coffee with me or, or talk to me. And, and that's really how I how the doors open. And once you're in the industry, continue to make network, you know, networking and, and making connections in, uh, in the industry was, was really um, important for kind of my transition from, from going uh, in baseball the mirrors down to the 49ers some some opportunities opened up and I made the move down down south just a little bit um, but I would say um, you know it's important to have a plan but it's also important um, to stay flexible and as opportunities open up like take a hold of those and run because a lot of times uh, those doors uh, those doors that you least expect are the ones that open up to the greatest opportunities oh that's helpful and yeah I can't it's you know I think it sounds like you were really strategic in the way that you leverage informational interviews, and it seems like, you know, with the same with Blake and Pete, kind of leveraging networking opportunities and just talking to people uh, was a big part of the process. So thank you for walking us through that. And speaking of tactics, uh, especially tactics for folks who are maybe sitting on the outside of the sports space and looking at, you know, different ways to enter or different ways to think about uh, and learn about different roles that are in the industry. Tyrone, I know you spent, you know, your you know, your entire career essentially in personnel. Uh, curious to get your tips for veterans or military spouses with limited experience, but are, who are very interested and passionate about the sports space. I'm curious, you know, if there were uh, some things that you would recommend for folks in uh, who were currently in that situation. Yeah, John, definitely. Uh, there's a lot of different resources that are out there that are available. Uh, a big part, which Ryan brought up, I, that every, I encourage anyone, is really taking advantage of informational interviews and having a chance to connect with as many professionals as you can. Uh, but as part of that, 
make sure it's a situation where you're going to be asking good questions. So do your research on the background of the individuals that you want to talk to, uh, to get an understanding of kind of their skill set, kind of how they first got in, what steps they did make. Uh, that That is a huge element of just being prepared to have questions for that. So one, you're at you're asking questions to interview them, but also they're interviewing you in, in, in the process. So that's one thing. Uh, one thing I also encourage uh, going back to 2009, I actually created a network. It's on LinkedIn called the Baseball Industry Network. It's a great resource for individuals that are trying to do some research on the industry. Uh, there's currently over 37,000 members on there. So it's a great way just to connect with other people that are just like yourselves that are maybe looking to get into the industry. But also there's a lot of professionals as well that are there who are in many cases want to help others. And, uh, and that's a big part of that. Uh, but, but as you are trying to figure out, understand further about just your skill set and be thinking about what things do I do well, what things can I look to maybe improve, but also just taking a look at others that are currently in the industry. It'll help you a little bit just to see some of the different experiences that people have that may be something that may be transferable for you to get that experience as well. Uh, and one thing also you, you will find uh, there are some opportunities with with different organizations. Uh, I'll just to give an example, say the Washington Nationals, you know, but then being in an area where the uh, armed services are, are very much very close and that connected to the community there. Uh, there's different opportunities that do open up that they have where they really target looking for uh, veterans and individuals that have been in our armed forces. So that is something that they really make it a big point to do that. So it's just finding little things that can just give you some experience as you are just trying to get started out and before you're ready to make that transition. Awesome. Thank you, Tyrone. And yeah, I find it, and I think I was this way as well. I think as we for folks who are fans of sports or interested, we, we tend to think about it as like this big uh, singular bucket where in reality, whether it's a league or, a, you know, a franchise, there are so many different functional areas uh, for folks to consider. And kind of going to Christina, I'm curious, I imagine, you know, working for a, a franchise that has the profile that you do, I imagine you get a ton of outreach from, you know, folks who are just starting their careers, who are making transitions, who have been in, you know, been in their job for a while. How should folks looking to get into professional sports think about the different functions and think about the different entry points? Is there, um, you know, a helpful framework that you've been able to provide for folks who are thinking about making the jump into the sports space? Yeah, I mean, I think Ryan kind of kicked this off by, by mentioning how important being curious and being inquisitive and, you know, doing your homework and research around who you're planning to meet with and who you plan to have, you know, thoughts for. And I know Tyrone is great at this too, because he'll just shoot a note checking in saying, Hey, how are you doing? Here's what I'm up to. Hope you're doing well. So I, I kind of like combining that approach of a, having an intro coffee or email exchange, phone exchange, and then ensuring that you're following up with this, individual because as everyone here has mentioned roles open up ad hoc in sports and being flexible and being able to kind of pivot when needed um, or finding a particular role that fits your plan and your goals for the next few years and fitting that in um, so framework wise for me my approach was you know not dissimilar from Pete's you know, I use the sort of investment finance background to get into the sports space and really started in finance and knew that I liked working with numbers um, and, and made that my goal and priority, but spent a couple of years figuring out, you know, what exactly is the type of role that fits best for my curiosity and general scenario planning and supporting revenues. And so that, you know, led to phone calls, meetings, coffee chats with almost every department, you know, at my first job in sports at the Clippers to understand how that kind of worked and operated prior to moving over to the Lakers and understanding how to apply those skills. So every framework is different, but what I will say the, the biggest takeaway is with each person you engage a conversation with, have a clear directive for yourself and what you're planning to achieve and accomplish from the conversation, whether it's two to three questions you're really hoping to answer, and then provide a few minutes at the end to ask if there are any ways that you can follow up and you can provide benefit or add value you know, to this individual 
for me, it was as simple as asking, you know, a cold LinkedIn email to a contact at the Clippers saying, hey, notice you're in analytics, you work with data, any chance you have 15, 20 minutes to chat. We got on the phone, we chatted. At the end of it, you know, I left it with, hey, if there are one or two items on your to-do list that you haven't been able to get to in this past year or two years and could use an extra set of hands, I've just finished school and, you know, I'm looking for an opportunity to add value. Um, and, and granted, the project didn't amount to anything, but it was the outreach and the availability. Um, and then once the job opened up, the familiarity with that person inside to be an internal advocate. No, I th yeah, I think that's great advice. Offering to add value, uh, you know, to the person that you're reaching out to, I think can be can be really helpful. Uh, Blake, I know as you noted earlier, you had a varied background prior to coming from the NFL. I imagine folks who are trying to enter the sports space have functional experience that may not neatly fit into a nice package that a job, you know, that they not may, may not identically match a job description. Do you have thoughts on the right way to frame functional experience that is relevant to a role, but may not be, you know, obviously the case uh, as, a, as a recruiter or hiring manager is, you know, reviewing backgrounds and resumes? You know, it, it varies. I think Christina gave some really good advice there, which is when reaching out to an individual, whether for an informational interview or for some, even a, you know, a cold outreach of some kind, we're all fortunate in sports to have a fair amount of inbounds that come in. At the same time, people, at least in my experience, and I hope it to be the case everywhere, generally try to be giving of themselves. All of us have our own experiences you've just heard that, that brought us here and try to pay that forward. Um, it's tough. It's competitive. That is, in fact, the nature of sports, but it's the case here as well for people trying to separate themselves. I don't think that there is any magic to specific domain expertise, especially coming into sports, which is a surprisingly small industry. Um, or individual functional areas. There, there are skills needed to do jobs and it will depend on each individual role. Um, but more often than not, when people reach out to me, the thing that stands out first is, has that individual uh, demonstrated some level of curiosity, some level of humility, a graciousness, a kindness to merit a response? Then once there, uh, the the next step of that, this, this idea of having an informational interview, or if there is a specific job that we're interviewing for, that's a completely different skill set. So there's, there's sort of three steps to this. One is sourcing and identifying people who, to target, to try to get some type of interaction and dialogue, an informational interview, coffee, a chat, whatever that may be. Then an informational, if there isn't a job yet, just building contacts and a network and identifying people who will provide some level of outreach and insight, whatever that could entail. And then the third is when there is actually a job, which is a completely different skill set to focus on and position oneself as a candidate. Um, all of those things um, have some level of overlap, but there's also some really differentiated skills that come up. I think the main thing to me that stands out, though, is the, um, the ability for each individual to separate uh, themselves by showing a bit of their personality and finding a balance between demonstrating interest and why they would be right for either the role and or some amount of our time to try to help in some way um, is really where it all starts. No, that's, that's really helpful. And I think a lot of the guidance given, I think we have some really good examples of how to kind of informally or semi-formally reach out to folks to learn and to kind of build, uh, you know, that network of contacts that then you can, you know, potentially leverage when a, a formal role opens up. And speaking, switching gears a bit and speaking about formal programs, Tyron, I know you've been involved, as you mentioned, uh, you know, a little bit earlier in the chat in operating programs that are intended to increase access uh, to professional opportunities within sports. Can you talk a little bit about some of the programs you, you have been involved in and some of the programs that exist today at Major League Baseball that are intended to increase access to formal roles in sports? Yeah, John, it's definitely, uh, it's been great that we've been able to have some, some build some really good relationships with different external partners uh, that have allowed us to have a chance to help individuals that are trying to make the transition into sports and in specifically into baseball. Uh, the last several years, we've actually had a great partnership with uh, 
uh, American Corporate Partners, ACP, which is a great organization that uh, has individuals they work with that are in the military that are looking to make the transition into different areas. And as part of that, uh, it's been a great opportunity for us to, to be involved as a staff to help to be mentoring individuals that are looking to make that transition uh, from the from the armed services. Uh, I've been very fortunate. This is my uh, my third uh, mentee that I have presently. Uh, my actually my very first mentee, uh, Dion Scott. Give him a shout out. He's actually with Google and is doing very well for for the company. So uh, it's it's been really great just to have the chance to really get to a level where you're talking to someone and being able to provide the insight about what different things exist in the industry, different tips on that end, but also just trying to find ways to, uh, to have that common thread that you each can really develop, but really trying to help that person find their pathway and be thinking about, hey, how does my skill set allow me to have a chance to be transferable into the industry uh, that, that they're thinking about? And it's been something that I, I've truly enjoyed. Uh, we've also uh, have been very active as an organization uh, within Major League Baseball. Uh, we have what we call business resource groups, uh, which are ways for us to gather our different employees and find the little communities within the company itself. Uh, we have one called the, the Military Veterans Professional, or MVP, which has allowed us to bring together our employees that have experiences uh, in the armed services and uh, or also that have individuals that are in their families that have been have served and just providing an, an opportunity to have support and knowing that, hey, you're here, you're represented within our company itself and doing whatever you can to provide any kind of support for individuals who are currently working in different roles throughout our company, but just finding those little common threads as a whole uh, amongst uh, the nine business resource groups we have within Major League Baseball. And we're also spreading these out within our 30 clubs as well as a way to kind of continue to connect people uh, amongst the individuals that are throughout the game. So it's something that uh, we take a lot of pride in uh, but a big part of it also is finding ways to drive the business and using uh, the the information and also just experiences to help us to do better as a company as a whole and make sure that we're representing ourselves fully. Got it. And if somebody listening wanted to find out more about some of these programs, how were, how would uh, he or she do that? Are there resources online or what's the what's the right way to uh, dig into some of the details of some of those programs? Yeah, uh, I would say, especially for uh, ACP, I would definitely reach out to one of the individuals I've dealt with. Uh, Brooke Lopez is a great uh, person I've had a chance to, to talk with over the last uh, several years. It's L-O-P-E-S, uh, B-R-O-O-K-E. She's, she's been tremendous. Uh, and she's uh, someone you, you can definitely look up on LinkedIn, other resources that, to, to connect with her. Uh, also, if people feel free to reach out to me as well at MLB. I'd be glad to connect with individuals. You can reach out to me at tyrone.brooks at mlb.com, and I'll be glad to help anyway on that end as well. So uh, definitely uh, I'd be glad to also connect those to uh, some of the resources we have internally as well as far as our, our business resource groups. But definitely something that, uh, you know, any way to make the transition, we're, we're trying to help individuals to, to be feel like they're supported and, uh, and also just help people realize exactly their pathway, where they're trying to go. Uh, in my role on a daily basis with Major League Baseball, I, I have a great chance just to, to have a chance to connect with individuals and kind of see exactly where their pathway is, where they're trying to head and provide guidance on, and, and also to provide the resources to connect them to where they're trying to head to. That's great. I, yeah, I imagine many people will take you up uh, on that offer. And related, Ryan, I, I believe the 49ers also have uh, some programs or some involvement with community groups that have programs that provide access can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, absolutely. The 49ers uh, have, a, have a long history of uh, supporting our military veterans. Um, this year, uh, John Lynch was one of three finalists for uh, the 10th Annual Salute to Service Award. Um, uh, we also partner with uh, USO Northern California. Um, uh, we have a number of events that we do with the USO here uh, in the region. Um, just to highlight um, one or two of them, uh, during during the COVID uh, pan pandemic, uh, we held a, uh, a drive-in movie theater um, uh, night for uh, 60 active duty and uh, military veteran families where they came in and they, they got a, um, a gift bag from some of our sponsors, uh, as well as a welcoming message from Ben Garland, one of the, 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 the uh, football players uh, for the 49ers who, uh, who played football at the Air Force Academy. Um, and then 
um, uh, we every Veterans Day we host uh, several veteran families. They come out to practice and, and we partner with them there. Uh, recently, we posted several job some of our jobs on uh, HireVeteran.com. Um, so that's that's a place if you're interested in some of our um, job postings. Uh, you can go to HireVeteran.com or you can go directly to Levi Stadium uh, backslash employment uh, to find find some of our current current roles. Thanks for flagging those resources. And Pete, let's say we have a candidate who's taken some of the advice that's been laid out on this panel, uh, you know, some of the informal advice laid out on this panel, or they've tapped in to one of the programs that Tyrone or Ryan has mentioned. They're now in their seat at a franchise and league. Can you talk a little bit about the qualities um, that you see for successful employees in your organization or sports in general? Are there a few traits um, that you think are, are relatively common amongst those who um, do well within in those buildings? Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, per, first before I go in, I just want to piggyback what Tyrone was saying. The ACP program is absolutely fantastic. It's my first year being involved with it this year and you know, very excited to continue on with it. Um, but, you know, as far as qualities in the workforce, I mean, the biggest one, and it's kind of cliche, but teamwork is the biggest thing. Um, it, especially in my seat, it's very rare that I'm ever doing a project on my own on an island. I'm always working cross-functionally with different departments. Um, different people within my department, within ticket sales, sponsorships, whatever it is, um, and the ability to, you know, interact and communicate with people for a common objective is crucial really to any work environment, but particularly in sports. Um, it doesn't, you know, just happen out on the field or on the court. It also happens, you know, in the front office. So I, mean, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, and honestly, when you get to a certain point, you know, the leadership qualities that most people in the military um, have, you know, those are qualities that I've seen. Um, that will just take someone extremely far, specifically within within our organization, but across all organizations. So I think those two are probably the two biggest from from my seat. Same question for you, Christina. As you look at the folks who have been successful within your organization, are there traits, characteristics, attributes, et cetera, that you would point to uh, for some of the folks on the call? Yeah, so four things kind of really stand out to me, and, and Pete touched on one of them. You know, one for me when I look at candidates is is problem solvers. You know, someone who can come in, roll up their sleeves, and have the you know humility, like Blake mentioned, but also curiosity to ask the questions that would help them understand the full layout of the background of any problem that comes up, and then the ability to take that and build a plan around it. Um, so that's very crucial, I think, to any sort of strategy and analytics kind of function and role, but really any, you know, team that's focused on, you know, trying new things, building out plans um, and projecting sort of business goals down the road. Two is creative thinkers. Um, this is the sports industry is an industry based around experiences. So, you know, individuals who can come in with a variety of backgrounds thoughts and discussion opportunities are of high value um, when looking at candidates. Three is being an effective communicator, um, someone who can take a you know, large set of data and translate that you know, into two to three bullet points is extremely valuable. And then fourthly, you know, someone who's emotionally intelligent and can understand that this business involves quite a few highs and lows, whether it's team performance, whether it's, you know, something at the arena that goes wrong that you're, you know, right away having to address, having that ability to understand and communicate to people from different backgrounds and a well-rounded enough picture where you can go through your head and prioritize, okay, this is an emergency one, so I will prioritize this first. And then understanding, you know, after that, how to kind of organize your day to work around, you know, tasks and goals that you're you're planning towards, um, but that's just you know a few of the items that I think kind of stand out. There are so many you know values and characteristics that I think, you know, if you were to ask me five years ago, this might have been a different answer than it is today. So I think it's a great question to continue asking and to bring up, you know, as you're as you're looking for you know what interests you and what roles might fit your personality and background. No, it's it's a really good list, and and I think one of the you know, just the one of the reality is is that 
you can you can acquire all those skills or build all those experiences outside of sports. There's no with all the things you mentioned, being a good problem solver, creative thinker, et cetera. There's no requirement to have been in a sports context in order you know, to be able to develop those skills. So really, really great advice. And I think we have time for roughly one more question and then we'll go to audience Q&A and wanted to close out with Ryan. And my understanding is that it's really common for military veterans or military spouses to feel a sense of imposter syndrome in their first non-military role. And Ryan, just because you've kind of been down this path, curious to know, did you have this experience? And if so, how did you overcome it as you as you transition from the Air Force uh, to the private sector? Yeah, thanks, John. This is actually my favorite question when, when, I, when I reviewed the questions here. This is my favorite one, and I'm so glad that you brought it up. Um, I, I think it is it, it is a real it is a real um, thing, and and I did experience that imposter syndrome. Um, you come from a, a military environment where maybe the nomenclature or the acronyms are all different, and you you have a different skill set, and things are defined different. And a lot of people outside the military uh, may have perceptions or preconceived notions about what what a military or veteran is, or or what their skill sets are. Um, and so first day, um, I think I've, I've gone through this transition tri- twice, right? I went from a logistics officer in the military to um, being a project manager in construction to now being an executive in sports. And, and so um, at each stage, I think I doubted myself. Um, I think it's normal. I think um, high achievers oftentimes walk into those scenarios and say, you know, do I really belong here? Do I, you know, should I have a seat at the table? Should I, should I be in these roles? And, and I think it's really important. I think my, 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 my advice for this, for anybody who may be struggling with this would be to, you know, to remember all of the things that you've done well and the skills that you do bring to the table and how different skill sets round out a team. Um, you know, Pete uh, talked about um, teamwork being, being important. And Christina, I love Christina's list. Uh, of, of traits. And so when you look at that, like those are all things that um, I learned and grew and, and, and got better at during my time in the military. And I see other military members doing those same things too. So remember that when you walk in, that yeah, maybe your background looks a little bit different than others in the room, but that's okay. Like that's what makes you important. That was what makes you valuable. And over time, those things are what's going to set you apart and make you successful. So um, don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid to step into the room and take on challenges. Um, I encourage people to do that. And so, John, I'm glad you asked that question. Thank you very much. No, and, and thank you for sharing your experience. I'm sure it's valuable for the folks uh, who are tuned in. And John, and, I, sorry, before we go to Q, I just want to add, add on to that as well. Like, that's something that I know I love that question too. I'm not a veteran, but I experience imposter syndrome almost every day. And the way I always think about it is if you're not feeling that, to me, that means you're not pushing yourself hard enough. Or you're not going outside of your comfort zone. I think in going outside of your comfort zone, that is how you kind of build your career in sports. And if you kind of stay where you're really comfortable, you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities. So um, that's what I keep at least trying to tell myself is that the imposter syndrome means that I'm pushing myself um, sometimes a little too much, but um, you know, I feel it a lot. No, it's, it's a great point. I think, you know, obviously getting outside of your comfort zone uh, can be a really helpful tool to, um, to ignite growth. So with that, I do want to leave some time for audience questions, and I will pin the uh, pin the helpful door here. So I will I'm getting these in real time. So I will look to uh, to read them and distribute them. So James asked for the anal- analytics people on the panel. My main goal is to get into sports analytics one day. What would you wish someone would have told you that would have helped you before you went into sports analytics? So maybe we'll uh, have Pete and Christina uh, address this one for us. Um, I mean, I guess one of the things is, you know, it's each team is very different. So, you know, analytics is a kind of buzzword term around the industry and really across all industries. Um, but each strategy team, each analytics team is very different within each league even. Um, so you really want to do your research on what the team, you know, how big the team is, how long they've been around, um, what are the specific skill sets and um, coding languages that they value versus maybe what some other teams value. Um, you know, there's a wide array of programming languages that, you know, we don't use at the Yankees, but Christina and her team might use at the Lakers. So um, it's tough to know them all, but I think knowing kind of what each specific team values and uses the most um, and doing research on that is something that I wish I had known going into the process. Yeah. And just to piggyback off of Pete and, 
kind of steal what Blake had opened us with um, also being a Penn grad. And one thing I learned at Penn was the power of being able to tell a story. So when Blake mentioned that he learned how to write and, you know, think strategically, you know, being able to take those skills and have an idea come across your plate and build an entire story around it. So not just from the business planning perspective of, you know, goal, people, resources, I need to get this done, but the anecdotal elements behind it. You know, what is the, what are the emotions and the, you know, touch points, you know, for this particular business idea that can help us get it across the finish line. And so I think from an analytics perspective, it's exactly what Pete said, being technically strong, but if you're not technically strong, there are ways to get there. And then adding on to that, if you're able to tell a story, translate, digest, provide a, an easy way for, you know, management or even, you know, test with your peers and colleagues and be, you know, open to saying, hey, I have this idea. Here's what I'm thinking. Do you have a couple minutes for me to run it by you and get buy in, you know, organically and then be able to take that and translate it to, you know, your boss or your colleagues or, you know, cross-functional departments that it might help. Um, so there's the kind of technical piece and then the, you know, softer piece of being able to communicate that as well. Great feedback. Hey, John, can I just add one thing also Ab just related absolutely. to Absolutely. In terms of also with, with obviously in baseball, you know, analytics is just a, a huge element in terms of how, you know, it's a part of our game and it's ingrained in terms of how teams are put together now. Uh, you know, a big part of that for those that are trying to break into the industry is look at, you know, putting putting potential research out there yourself and creating some type of a product yourself is something that can help put you on the radar for many of our teams. Uh, and that's where there's a lot of publicly available data that's out there that you can gain access to through websites, or, you know, whether it's fan graphs or baseball, perspe baseball prospectus. Uh, uh, also, baseball reference. There's a lot of public data that's out there, so you can start thinking about, you know, a particular area or a topic that you're interested in, and then just dig further into that area, and then start to actually put together your own research, and then and also think about, you know, do I want to, you know, is there like a, a board or something that article-wise that I can put together, or if you have your own blog, uh, those are just great ways and resources to put information out there because the teams are always looking. For talent you know, they're trying to uncover people as much as they can so anyway you can put your information out there whether you're even you're posting something that can be linked to to twitter or uh, or linkedin the the teams are all looking for for talent and trying to find as many people as they can that definitely have a passion and a curiosity uh, for breaking in and also just for, for different subject areas so just definitely something to encourage people to keep uh, don't give up. Keep pushing in terms of putting something out there that you can be proud of. Uh, but also you'll have a chance to also share that with other people that are in the industry as well. And that's where the informational interviews we talked about earlier and people will be willing to, to evaluate what you've done to help you and also give you some feedback on that. So just a lot of different ways that you can make your way down that pathway. Be, be thoughtful and get scrappy seems to be our, our theme for <laughs> our theme for the panel today. Do we have any more questions in the Dory? All right. Chris P. asks, for those of us interested in transitioning to the sports industry, would you recommend applying for positions at the club and team level first, or would you prioritize applying for corporate roles at the league level? I feel like any number of folks uh, could tackle this. So maybe why don't we go to, go to Blake and, and Ryan uh, to take a stab at this one. Should, should folks start at the club level first or the league level first? Figure out what you want to do, man. Uh, you know, look, I, I think there really is no right answer here. So much of this starts with the individual. What do you think is going to be right for you? Where are your strengths? Where are the things that you think are of interest? And by the way, chances are you have no idea. So apply everywhere. It's a tough and competitive industry. Meet as many people as possible and go out and figure out once you're through a process. If there is a job that's on the table, then consider whether it's the right one for you. Um, I, I think that's uh, if it sounds harsh, it's meant to be supportive. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of nuance to each of these individual roles. And, um, you know, as you've heard a couple of different times on this panel, there are buzzwords used that can mean different things at different clubs, at different leagues, at different companies. 
analytics is used a lot. My department is called business development. We literally have five different departments that use business development just at the league office. They all mean different things. So a lot of this, I think, just comes down to identifying first what each individual thinks are their strengths and areas that they want to focus on, and then going after any roles that may be out there. Um, because, and it's, you know, a, a sort of repeat of what we said earlier, but there's three steps to this process. One is figuring out what you want to do. The second is identifying informational interviews or people who can help you provide any further insight to identify where there might actually be jobs hiring in those specific areas. And the third is then being a candidate in a process. Um, if you can go straight to step three, that's great, but often it's a continuum. Yeah, I, I, I know we're at a little bit of time crunch, but I, I will just follow up on what Blake said. I think he's right. I think you look at each in, uh, opportunity individually. Um, it's really hard to get your foot in the door. So uh, if an opportunity comes up, seriously consider it. Um, I know people who have gone from the team to the league. I know people who have gone from the league to the team. So even if you get your foot in the door and start meeting people, doesn't mean that's where you end up ultimately. So um, take those advantages, consider each one individually, and then go from there. Hey, and just one last note on this. There are people who have entire careers in sports who never work for a team or a league, corporate partners, distributors, media companies like Google and YouTube are all people who might spend their entire careers working in sports, but doing so outside of one of those areas. And they're obviously people we work with closely as well. So it's a much broader industry often that is uh, fully appreciated. That's a, that's a great point, Blake, and, and great one to, uh, to end on. We're unfortunately out of time for this panel, but I want to thank all the panelists for joining. I found your stories insightful. I imagine the audience did as well. And um, we appreciate you giving back to those in, in, the, in the military community, especially those who are interested in sports. And for those watching, there are more industry, industry panels to come. If you're interested in the automotive industry, you can stay logged on to this live stream and you'll hear from folks from Uber, Waymo, uh, and Ford and Tesla. And if you're interested in management consulting, finance and banking, there is also a, a on-demand panel covering that area. So we hope that this was insightful and interesting or, or at a minimum, a little bit entertaining for you. And uh, we wish you best of luck in your career journeys and hope to see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. John. Thanks, everyone.